what I'd like to do next is just go into the most common types of hearing loss, um, which we tend to see. And also I'm going into some important ones, which we don't see often, but are very important for you to understand what to do when you experience these sort of symptoms. So with noise induced hearing loss, it's probably one of the most common ones we see um, in the past before there was regulation requiring hearing protection. Uh, we found a lot of men. This is certainly a lot more prevalent in males than females due to work, um, had noise induced hearing loss. And what that means is essentially part of your hearing might be perfectly normal, but the high frequency part has this notch um, in it. Essentially it's loud noise coming in. It travels along the cochlea, which is a little spiral and all that energy is lost in that first curve of the spiral which relates to the hair cells in the inner ear, which serve the high frequencies. So the common symptoms with a noise induced hearing loss is I can hear fine, as long as it's not a female voice or a child's voice, as long as you're not looking away from me, um, as long as there's no background noise, because it's not a loss as such of volume, it's a loss of clarity. So you can hear what people are saying but you can't distinguish what's being said. If you're looking at someone, there might be enough information to get the information off the lips, even though you're not trained in it. The brain uses whatever it can get. Um, but if you're not looking at someone, then those high frequencies are really gonna affect you. Fortunately now with legislation, we're really moving away from work-induced noise-related um, hearing loss. But what we're seeing take up that space is self-induced noise-induced hearing loss where people use headphones and turn them way too loud and you're causing hearing loss that way. And also loud concerts where if you're standing in front of a speaker, you can only be there for about 10 minutes before it causes damage. Um, so a lot of young people are exposing themselves to that kind of noise or even people um, who cause noise induced hearing loss working on farms for themselves without hearing protection causing that kind of hearing loss. So it is very important to protect your hearing and noise because it can and most likely will cause noise induced hearing loss. Um, in your case, there's some, a very small percentage of people who don't suffer it as badly. It seems to be a genetic link, but it's a small fraction of people who could tolerate that noise and not have much damage, but you don't know. So best to protect your hearing because you can't get your hearing back. That's a, the graph you see there is a pure noise induced hearing loss, but again, it could be combined with an age hearing loss. It could be combined with a conduct he hearing loss. So that's just a pure noise induced hearing loss. Typically um, tinnitus might be part of it because you're gonna hear the high pitch sounds, um, essentially just the nerves firing away for the high pitch. So it will most likely be a high pitch tinnitus with that kind of hearing loss. And hearing aids these days work very well for that kind of hearing loss which wasn't traditionally the case. It was very hard to address only the high pitch without causing issues in the low pitch or causing whistling in the hearing aids. But modern hearing aids over the last 10 plus years have been very, very effective at treating this kind of hearing loss. So important to know because a lot of men will still suffer from that, this old generation um, that still has that kind of hearing loss from work. Age-related hearing loss is another very common one. Um, one thing to understand is just because you're getting older and there's hearing loss associated with it, and certainly the, the older you are, the more likely you are to have hearing loss, doesn't mean that it's normal. You still have impaired hearing, but it might just be more prevalent in your age group. Typically, it's to do with wear and tear in the ear, not specifically to noise per se. Um, and there's a variety of causes it would generally appear to be a, a more gradually sloping loss or a flat loss. But again, you can have an age-related overlay on top of a noise-related hearing loss, which could change this graph altogether. And as you can see, the prevalence is quite large, over 65, and that increases as you get older. So um, at 90, it's going to be about 90% prevalence of hearing loss. So there is definitely an age-related component there as well. And Normally hearing aids work very well for this kind of hearing loss. And the symptoms might relate to where your loss is greatest. So in this case, this person's volume for the low pitch might be reduced, but they've got a lot of problems with the clarity as well. 
And we certainly would have to look at the person's speech understanding to see how well they might do with hearing aids, both in quiet and in noise. This one is really what I wanted to bring into today's webinar. Um, it's something that's not often understood by GPs even, but essentially what it is, it's a very sudden hearing loss where you wake up one morning and the hearing in one ear is, appears to be gone. If you do hear anything, it's quite distorted, might have an echo or certain sounds might make it go zing or squeak or all sorts of weird sounds. Um, it's not always associated with pain in that ear, but your ear might feel blocked because you're not getting any sound in. If you experience any of those symptoms and it's happened very suddenly, it's very important you see your GP and talk to them about sudden hearing loss. What I've unfortunately seen is a lot of GPs or some GPs might then prescribe antibiotics, even though the ear appears clear. And they usually give it a week and then check again, and then they send to a specialist. But this kind of hearing loss typically needs steroid treatment within hours, within the first 24 hours to be, have any chance of success. Um, steroids, as you can see on this graph, can recover a lot of the hearing, um, or most of it in, in many cases, but without steroid treatment for this kind of hearing loss, it's unlikely, and, and quick steroid treatment for this kind of hearing loss, it's unlikely you're going to get much recovery. So if you experience any symptoms of a fullness in the ear, sudden change in your hearing overnight that doesn't um, get better when you try and equalize your ear, for instance, without any pain in the ear necessarily, um, ringing, distortion in one ear, um, then that is a reason to see your doctor or even go to a hospital's emergency department because they seem to be more likely to get you onto the ear, nose and throat specialist to recommend um, steroids. It's not something you can go to the chemist for either. Audiologists can't re um, recommend steroids. It has to be your doctor, um, but certainly an audiologist can do the test and do the referral, but whether or not you're going to get that uh, internal audiologist within those 24 hours, um, that's a good question as well. So very important to be aware if anything changes very quickly in your hearing, particularly if there's distortion, get to see your doctor and don't just accept antibiotics as the, the answer, because if it's this kind of hearing loss, it might leave you with permanent damage to the ear. And typically the speech understanding with this kind of hearing loss is terrible. So hearing aids don't work particularly well for this kind of hearing loss, um, as we've seen in the clinic. Another not particularly common type of hearing loss is something called uh, uh, acoustic neuroma or schwannoma. Um, in this case, the vestibular schwannoma would create a, a balance disturbance. But essentially, the auditory nerve, the hearing nerve that runs between the ear and the brain, is only about two centimeters long, and it runs through a little bony canal. Typically, this kind of, it's a cancerous growth, but it's a benign cancer, so it's not going to kill you. It essentially just takes up space. So that nerve runs through a little channel in the bone, and if there's a growth on that nerve, that growth pushes out against the bone, but obviously can't push into the bone, so it starts pushing into the nerve. And as it pinches that nerve, it can create hearing loss. And it could also create balance disturbance. So typically you could um, have a slow development of one ear dropping gradually over time. And that's why it's important to see an audiologist if you've got hearing loss, because they can monitor your hearing over time. It might be linked to single-sided tinnitus, a ringing in that ear. And it typically becomes worse and worse and worse over time. It may or may not include vestibular system um, issues, which relates to balance disturbances, dizziness, nausea, that sort of feeling. Um, but that's not always the case. Sometimes it just presents as a hearing loss. Sometimes it might just present as a balance disturbance. Um, so again, it's important to see an audiologist if you have any hearing loss, particularly if it's one ear alone, um, it tends to trigger a few red flags um, so if you've got a hearing loss only in one ear or significantly worse in one ear, I can only encourage you to see an audiologist because we need to differential, differential diagnosis to 
try and figure out, is it something serious? Do you need to be referred on, um, see a doctor, see an ENT to, to get some clarity on that loss? In many cases, it's not, but you don't know until you know. Many years disease is something we see fairly commonly. Um, it tends to be a genetic disease. It's also, some studies have described it or assigned it to people who are a bit more stressed. Essentially, it's also a single-sided hearing loss, and it typically involves fluctuation in hearing. So some days you might hear better, other days your hearing might drop, and it would also normally associate some sort of distortion in the ear. So it's not just like things get softer, but it might also have squeaky noises or echoes or, or things going on in the ear. It's very commonly also associated with a low pitch um, tinnitus. So uh, people describe it as a rumbling or an ocean-like noise. And it's to do with excessive pressure buildup in the inner ear, which tears the little membrane in the inner ear itself, in the cochlea. Um, the fluids mix, the electrical potential changes, your hearing drops until that membrane heals again, and the hearing might go back up again. But over time, the, the hearing loss gets greater and greater and greater up to a point where the many ears might st stabilize. Many ears might be only cochlea, where it's only a hearing loss that fluctuates. It might be classic vent many ears, which both has a hearing loss, but also has a very disturbing symptom of nausea, room spinning associated with a many ears attack. Or it might only be a vestibular many ears where your hearing isn't affected but you do suffer the vestibular systems, the balance disturbances, the nausea, the room spinning, which is quite awful. Um, typically people with this kind of loss, particularly if it includes vestibular symptoms, tend to end up going to the GP or refers them on to an ear, nose and throat surgeon. And there's medications that can help you manage your many years disease with. Um, a good um, bit of advice for this kind of hear hearing loss, uh, which is quite common is just avoid um, salt, because salt can build up more pressure in the ear, although um, I wouldn't stick to just that. Definitely see a doctor if you do have um, any symptoms like that. And again, it brings the, to light the fact that if one ear is different to the other ear, that's a trigger to go see a specialist, an audiologist, a GP. Um, if it's a sudden change in hearing, go to your, your doctor. Um, if it's a slow change, See, a, see an audiologist who can then refer you to your doctor after doing the diagnosis because the doctor's going to need those results in any case. So autosclerosis is another kind of hearing loss that tends to affect one ear first and it might then involve the other ear later. So essentially um, what it is, it's a genetic condition, tends to be more prevalent in females than males. Um, often happens... Um, after or during pregnancy because there's more calcium flowing through the body um, to help the baby and, and ladies. And what happens is the little last little bone in the ear, the stapes, sits on a little membrane. As sound hits the eardrum, it vibrates through and vibrates the little membrane. But around that membrane, brain is bone. So if the, the bone of the little stapes um, grows or gets connected to the bone of the, the skull, basically, um, you might have calcium deposits through that little ring that separates the two, and that starts fixating this last little bone so the vibrations of the eardrum doesn't go through to the fluid of the inner ear properly. And as those fixations increase, that bone gets more and more stuck, which means your hearing loss will um, increase over time. So what will happen then is... Um, your hearing loss will get worse and worse and worse gradually over time. It might involve tinnitus, doesn't typically involve pain, but might involve a, a, a fullness in the ear because your ear feels blocked and it might only be in one ear. We often see it's more in the left ear than the right ear as well. For some reason, we don't quite understand. Um, but as it gets worse, that calcification might actually go into the inner ear and start involving a nerve-related loss as well. Um, the kind of surgery that works well for it is called the stapedectomy, where they essentially cut the little stapes off. They drill a little hole through the remaining footplate of the stapes and then put a little piston that rests on that membrane and tie that piston onto the two other bones. 
that carries vibrations through. Um, the risk with that is quite large. So you need to speak to a specialist around it. And the specialist might actually recommend hearing aids prior to going down the surgery path because hearing aids work extremely well for this kind of loss because all it is, you just need more power to cross that fixation and you hear really well, even with more basic hearing aids. Again, single-sided hearing loss that needs um, investigation. Middle ear infection um, is a very common one for children. Also, some adults might have suffered hearing loss due to infections over years and years and years, so they'll know who they are. They typically under care of a specialist by that time because it could be quite painful as the pressure builds up. Um, it's important it's treated though because the middle ear is very close to the brain and obviously anything that's um, infecting the ear could eat through the skull and cause um, meningitis as well over time. So it's not something you just leave. Um, children would often report sore ears. Uh, it's easily fixed. Normally a doctor would try um, antibiotics and if that doesn't work or if it's a consistent issue, they might use grommets, which is a little tube that drains the, the fluid and the pressure through the ear canal rather than through the instating tube, which is dysfunctional in this kind of hearing loss. Um, so quite a common one, uh, and particularly in children, but also found in, in some adults. So hopefully that covers the, the main types of hearing loss for you. As always, we've got a whole set of resources um, available to you. You've got our YouTube channel where this will appear along with many other videos relating to hearing, hearing loss, hearing aids. We've got our knowledge base, which is just that web address there. Um, that's typically for troubleshooting hearing aid issues, but also talking about things like hearing loss, et cetera. We've got the main value hearing website, which is just valuehearing.com.au, which has a, a massive blog with hundreds of articles covering various topics of interest. So have a look at that. Um, as always, speak to your own hearing specialist. And when it comes to hearing loss, speak to your doctor, although some GPs don't have much training in hearing. So it is worthwhile seeing an audiologist if you think something is wrong. Um, but definitely speak to your doctor about it as well. The Hearing Aid Bias Companion is a, a new book I've released. It talks about all the, the kinds of hearing loss and really talks you through the journey of hearing aids, if that's an option for you. So if you're considering hearing aids, that's a very good resource. It's available on Amazon. You can just um, Google it and you'll find it. And it's Kindle and hard copy, or even at our clinics, we sell them over the counter as well. And then feel free as always to contact us with any questions. We can refer you on to resources, refer you on to people or help you ourselves where we can. But otherwise, um, that's it from me. I hope you all stay safe. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.